What's going on guys? Today we're going to be talking about how to photograph Comet Neowise that's passing Earth right now in four steps. Welcome back. So if you're not aware, there's a comet passing Earth right now throughout the month of July that's visible in the Northern Hemisphere as well as partially in the Southern Hemisphere. So I'm gonna break it down by the apps that you use, the camera gear that you're gonna need, how to find its location, and then the camera settings that you're most likely going to be playing around with. These are the settings that I used. It's probably gonna be different for you. Lighting conditions are always different. So one of my main go-to apps that I use is called Photo Pills. It's about $10 a month. Uh, it tells you the sunrise, sunset, all of the golden hour times. It also has moonrise and set times on there, uh, the phase of the moon, and then the light visibility that the moon is giving off. The app also has in it a augmented reality system that you can turn on and it'll show you where the Milky Way is, uh, when the center is gonna be perfectly visible and when the, the Milky Way is going to be vertical as well. So that way you can get those nice vertical Milky Way shots. The second app that I use is the Dark Sky Map. The Dark Sky Map shows the light pollution in your area so that you can find and have like the best visibility where you know you're gonna be able to see lots of stars, have a clear uh, point of view for this thing, or if you go out and shoot the Milky Way, I use this app all the time. The third app that I use is the NOAA Weather app. I find that this app is the most accurate when giving weather predictions, giving you a seven day forecast, hourly temperature, wind speed, and precipitation percentages, and has a live radar in case there's any storms coming by or where you can go to bypass them in conjunction with the dark sky map. And then the fourth thing that I use really isn't an app, it's a website, and it's called cleardarksky.com. So you go to the website and you're gonna find your state. Next to it, it says list and map. I click on list. List is gonna bring you to another page and then you can find your city or any of the cities with the darkest blue square. This little uh, blue square indicates the clear sky with the littlest amount of clouds. And again, the darkest overall area, which is really important. You want as little light pollution as possible to have the best uh, advantage of seeing this thing. Tip number two, camera gear. So this is something we're all pretty familiar with. I mean, you should, you probably have a general idea of what it is you're gonna need right off the bat, but I'm gonna go ahead and go through it anyway. So you're gonna want a DSLR or mirrorless camera. And then I specifically used a 24 to 70 millimeter uh, Canon L lens. And then I used a 70 to 200 millimeter Canon L series lens. The 24 to 70 I used for establishing pictures uh, setting the scenery, seeing it in, uh, where, where the comet is passing, the location that I'm in, everything like that. And then I used the 70 to 200 to zoom in and get a close-up picture of it, you know, to really document this thing and show, showcase the comet for what it is. The next thing that you're gonna want is a tripod. When you're shooting long exposures, which I'm gonna go over in the last tip, you're gonna need a tripod. Unless you already have a really good camera that can shoot one to five seconds with in-body stabilization, you know, then you can risk it. But I would still recommend shooting with a tripod and making sure that it's not really windy out. You know, use that, uh, that NOAA weather app to check the wind speed. And then lastly for camera gear, I recommend bringing a couple extra batteries. Most of the time when you're shooting uh, long exposures like this, you're shooting in live view. So if you're shooting in live view, you're gonna be draining your camera's battery even quicker. And then when you're taking long exposures, that also drains your battery quicker because there's more buffering time. And you know, all these mechanics are working at a longer rate for a longer period of time. So you wanna bring a couple extra batteries. I went through a battery and a half yesterday for the hour and a half that I was actually out there shooting this. Tip number three, we're gonna get into the location of it. So about 60 minutes before sunrise in the Northeast, if you find the star Capella using the apps that I mentioned, take your fist and if you hold your arm straight out and set your pinky on the horizon, that is about 10 degrees off the horizon line. So if you use those apps, find the star, kind of get a good judgment of, of where 10 degrees is and then keep your eyes there. Last night shooting it after sun, sunset, 
we were actually able to see it with the naked eye, but I'll get into that in just a minute. So at the sunrise, it's gonna be in the Northeast. For sunset, we're gonna be looking into the Northwest. For us, it was about 80 minutes after sunset, we were able to uh, find it just underneath the Big Dipper, about, I'd say almost 15 degrees, almost 20 degrees off of the horizon line. So using the same method, finding the Big Dipper, using those apps, and then judging with your fist where the, where the comet is actually going to be positioned. And then I was taking practice shots about 45 minutes after sunset, I was taking a shot maybe every uh, 10, 15 minutes to see when it would eventually pop up. And it was around, right around the 80 minute mark is when I first was able to start seeing it. And it was visible, I'd say for almost, almost a good hour. And then it, it really started uh, dipping below the horizon. The comet will be the closest to Earth July 22nd through the 23rd. And on those days, you'll also have a crescent moon, which will make for an even more beautiful and stunning picture. Every day that we get closer to that, the, the comet will actually start rising above the horizon. So it's gonna, it's gonna get a couple degrees almost every day. So, you, you know, still use the 10, 20 degree method and then just look around there, be shooting around there and you'll be able to see it on your camera. And then lastly, when you're choosing a location, make sure that you're not going anywhere where there's gonna be trees or tall buildings or any type of building that's going to be blocking your view. You know, a tree can easily cover up 10 to 20 degrees of the horizon line. So find a nice lake, a field. We shot over the bay here in Virginia. So we had a lot of room to, to maneuver where we didn't have any obstructions. Before I move on to the fourth and final tip, talking about the settings, do me a favor if you're finding value in this and drop a like, comment as a smaller channel those likes, comments, shares, those subscribes, they do make a big difference in getting this video out there and it costs you guys nothing and only takes a few seconds and it means a lot to me, so thank you. So the fourth and final tip, we're gonna get into the settings. The settings that I personally used for the photo shown in this video. So if you're shooting on a crop sensor camera, the best way to find your shutter speed to get the least amount of star trails is you're gonna to wanna to take 500 divided by the focal length that you're shooting and then multiply that by 1.6. And that should be around the shutter speed that you should be shooting at. Now you can play with that and see if you can dial it in even more, but that's gonna be the starting point for you. For full frame, it's just gonna be 500 divided by the focal length that, that you're shooting at, and that's gonna be your shutter speed. I was shooting with my aperture or f-stop at 2.8 so that I could get the most amount of light in, you know, with my shutter drop down between one five and seven seconds. And then I was shooting with my ISO, starting out at ISO 100, moving my way up to ISO 800 as the sun continued to drop further below the horizon. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, comment, share, subscribe, hit the little bell notification so that you guys get notified when I post these videos. You can check out my podcast, Close Up Podcast, uh, if you don't feel like watching some of my other videos and you'd rather listen to them, I put them into a podcast format as well. And then you can find me on Instagram at Lively Productions. And you can also visit my website, livelyproductions.com. And then I'm also on TikTok where I do short form uh, photography tutorials and photography style videos. And that is just Nick Boris. You can find me there. And lastly, if you're in the Virginia area and you want to book a shoot or collaborate or do anything like that, Shoot me a DM on Instagram and let's chat. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll talk to you guys next week.